So, quick question. When you wake up in the morning with a raise of hands, who here wakes up and jumps out of their beds and says, I love technology? Who does that in the morning? Anybody? Okay, not a lot of people, maybe one or two. Question number two, you get out of bed. Who are those people? I want to see those hands. You jump out of bed and you say, I love blockchain. Anybody? Ah, a couple of people. But who amongst you, on an everyday basis, is bombarded with technology terms, blockchain, Bitcoin, big data, you know, all these big words, and you say, hey, I can't make sense of these things. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. I don't understand any of it. And I can't tell anybody that I don't know nothing about these things. Who here is among those people? Let's see. Okay, great. You guys are courageous. And you guys, and us, and me, and a majority of people in this world are like this. You know, there's too much technology talk, too many buzzwords, too much hype. You know, people are going and buying cryptocurrencies, and the next day they're tanking. They're investing in, in big data, and the next year it's cloud. And th these trends are, are not real. Some of them are just hype. And the challenge that I saw in the industry is that in order to create real value, we need to separate hype from reality. We need to separate things that are real, that have real impact on governance, on uh, the private sector, on the public sector, from things that distract people. I, I work with a lot of C-level people and governments, and the challenge is people won't even tell you that they don't understand things. They just, they just say, yeah, 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 I understand. So do you understand this? Yeah, yeah, I understand. They don't. And I think we need to cross that chasm, we need to break that mold in order to make technology more friendly, in order to help people understand technology in a way uh, where it would be really easy to understand it. And so that kind of led to the film Blockchain City. Uh, in the year, you, you probably know the story that in, uh, in the year 20, or was it 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto came out with, with Bitcoin, which was founded on, on blockchain, so it's been about, uh, about 10, 11 years. And so last year, exactly 10 years after that incident, I said, hey, I've got to do something about this because I don't understand what's happening with blockchain. I don't understand what's happening with Bitcoin. And so don't uh, many, many other people across the world. And I said, let me, let me make a documentary film. Let me talk to people who have really done something in blockchain, who are working on this technology, who are creating results, who are creating positive change. And let me hear their thoughts to understand what's happening. CU Ledger uh, has become part of this film, and it's because of this where uh, we were able to uh, complete this project. But I could run a chart after chart, a graph after graph, to show you where technology is going, how it's increasing, and we could uh, run at different things. But what I want to do is simplify technology so that you're not afraid of it. So tell me something. What do you see here? What feeling does this give to you? Are you angry because you're seeing this? Who's angry? Anybody? Are you sad? No, nobody. Who's, who's feeling a little peaceful? Right? All of you. Everybody's feeling peaceful, right? And so this technology, that kind of brings peace of mind. This is my definition. That technology is blockchain. Blockchain is about peace of mind. Artificial intelligence is about freedom. And so we've got to define technology in a new way that we can relate to, rather than say that, well, blockchain is this ledger in the sky you know, with two things and a network and everything is being updated and this, it's this new database. I don't like that definition because nobody, understand it, and nobody understands it except a few people who work deep, deep in this technical field. But everyday people, you and I, individual contributors, business leaders, we're not technical. We're not. So we have to change the definition that we use to, to understand and explain technology. This is Glacier 51 toothfish. This fish lives two kilometers under the sea, near the South Pole. And fishermen in southern Australia travel 4,200 kilometers one way, 4,200 kilometers the other way, after going on a fishing trip to catch this fish. It's a very prized fish. It's very delicate, the flavor is amazing, and it's a very rare find. So restaurants around the world, 
sell it. And uh, connoisseurs of this menu pay high dollar to enjoy this fish. Now, what's the connection with technology? Well, good connection. Blockchain technology today tracks the fishing of this fish, of Glacier 51 toothfish. And now you can have a, 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 a farm to fork tracking of this fish to ensure and to give those people who are consuming this fish at the end that this is the trace of the fish. This is the place it was caught. This is sh the ship that was, it was at. This is the plant where it was processed and packaged. And that's how value is created. It's one application of blockchain. Uh, in the world, about $2 billion worth of beef is sold as, as Australian beef, and it's fake. It's not Australian beef. It's some other beef, but it's labeled and tagged as, as original Australian beef. And this is a fraudulent industry that's affecting the food world. So we're not getting the things that we want from, from, from our grocery stores. And there's a company that's challenging this thing and changing it by tracking the origin of beef from Australia and making sure that that beef has that trace of being tracked from, from source you know, to, to the plate. In the United States, about $40 billion of insurance fraud happens. And uh, this is people fraudulently claiming things. Uh, this picture is actually somebody in the UK. They wanted to uh, claim 300,000 uh, pounds worth of insurance, and four or five people died in this thing. And this is a live industry where people are suffering. But if this was on blockchain technology, this wouldn't have happened because everything would have been traceable, trackable, and so on. So these are the things that kind of pushed me to, to, to figure out what's happening with blockchain. And I contacted governments across the world and, and, and asked them, can we hear from you? What's your journey? And why are you doing blockchain? What's, what's pushing you to, to implement blockchain? And Dubai is, is a great success story. And so is Estonia, and something's happening in Denmark, and something is happening in many different parts of the world. And these stories need to be told in a manner that we understand. I interviewed some really cool people as part of the film, starting here uh, in Dubai. You obviously know that Dubai has a huge um, project in blockchain. Smart Dubai is, uh, is, is pushing that for 2020. And I think you all should be proud. Whoever is here from the Emirates should be really proud about that, because that story needs to be told to the rest of the world. Similarly, in the Netherlands, they're doing something, and we want to learn from them as ordinary people. Not just technologists need to learn that, but we all need to learn that story. I have somebody from, from Denmark. Um, I have a Grammy Award winner who, who's doing something with blockchain technology to make sure that artists get paid with their worth of work, because apparently 50% of payments do not reach artists at all. And so these are some of the challenges. We interviewed Estonia as well. And so uh, here at the World uh, uh, Government Summit, it's my pleasure to bring you uh, the first public preview of the film. I'm just going to play 10 minutes of the film. The actual film is going to be screened at uh, the future blockchain summit here in Dubai, uh, 2nd and 3rd of, uh, 3rd of April. So please visit that show. But uh, I'm going to play 10 minutes uh, of the film. Please enjoy. Let's have some lights down, and uh, let's play the film. My name is Ian Khan. After meeting with hundreds of professionals, experts, industry practitioners over the last few years, I found a severe need within the industry across the board to help figure out what the fuss was all about with this new technology called blockchain. Blockchain City is the true story of blockchain and the reality of how it impacts us all. As people, our cities, our workplaces, our families, and our future.
Sometime after the year 2008, an entity or a group of people under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto came out with the famous white paper that highlighted a new electronic form of currency that would independently change everything about money. A new revolution had begun. Blockchain was the core technology foundation of this new currency, and this revolution has now culminated into a global phenomenon. Governments, private and public sector firms are embarking on creating more value, more change, and solving some of the world's biggest problems. My journey of understanding this global movement to create more trust, secure our transactions and create more value started in the city of Dubai. This is where the vision of tomorrow is driving an aggressive strategy of how technology can augment our capabilities. Follow me on this journey as I embark on a quest to find the truth from those who know best where we're headed. In the middle of the Arabian Peninsula, one of the most well-known cities is Dubai, a fast-growing metropolis and the epicenter of change in the Middle East. Dubai has always been synonymous with progress, challenging the status quo, and dreaming big. The government of Dubai, with its vision of tomorrow, powered by technology, has embarked on an aggressive plan to enable a blockchain-based government by 2020. The United Arab Emirates also has a national plan to enable blockchain across all seven emirates in the next decade or so. Don't fear from technology. Be smart in how to deal with these technologies. Doesn't matter if it's a blockchain or uh, big data or any type of technologies, even our smart devices. As long as we know why we are using it. If you don't know how to use them, go and educate yourself. Make sure that you utilize the, the best of, of these technologies for your own benefit. We need to be wise enough to understand what these technologies will add value to my life. And for me personally, as long as it will make my life much simpler and much easier, I will go for it. From manufacturing to logistics, transportation, healthcare, and real estate, every sector, every industry is set to undergo a radical shift in the next few years, potentially because of blockchain. Yet, we do not understand blockchain to an extent where we could really be comfortable with it. To date, technology has been a domain of computer programmers, experts, and leaders alone. But just like blockchain promises democratization of technology, we need to break down the barriers to understand blockchain itself. We must find out what blockchain really is, and more than that, how it can be defined by what value it brings. A blockchain is essentially a breakthrough in database technology. It's a, a new kind of database system that because of its architecture enables everybody on the system to trust the system. It's a tool for decentralizing relationships, contracts, and decision-making so that they aren't mediated uh, by gatekeepers of various kinds. That's a very powerful idea. If you use a little example here to make it a bit more illustrative to the viewers, uh, you could think of a transaction which we all observe. So let's assume all the viewers here which are watching us right now would have a little black notebook on their lap and would kind of take notes of all the transactions they are seeing. And they are seeing right now a person here standing which maybe not they are not familiar with. And that person is holding $20 in his hands. So you have super sharp eyes and you can see the ID and everything and this is a legal token. So now you see that I give this $20 to this gentleman over here, which you don't know, but you have seen the transaction took place. Now you write this transaction in your little black notebook 
and uh, calculate a little sum to that and you add all the su subsequent transactions to that. Uh, now let's say in five minutes I'm saying, oh wait a minute, that weren't twenty dollars, that were hundred dollars and I want my hundred dollars back. So all the people who are viewing this transaction, I would have now to, to convince that their transaction, which have been kind of jotted down in their little black notebooks, are not actually $20, but $100. Now, how would I do that, right? Because I don't know how many people actually have a ledger, have written down this transaction. And on top of that, I would have kind of pried my way through. I have to persuade them to change the entry. Why would they do that, right? Because they don't know me. There's nothing they can gain here. And in, in, uh, in parallel, all the other transactions which are ongoing because more people kind of doing payments, they have to be jotted down as well. So they would be super busy and that would be prohibitively expensive for me to do so, so economically it doesn't make sense. Despite the various explanations that blockchain is defined as, it's still hard to sometimes comprehend the actual technology. And for that, we must understand it beyond just its architecture. One of the most innovative and forward-thinking countries in the world is also one of the tiniest European nations, Estonia. Over the last two decades or so, Estonia has really laid the foundation of a digitally powered nation and is now reaping its rewards. Estonia is also considered to be a leader in blockchain, which in some ways is often a less represented fact. Estonia kind of had blockchain databases before the, the term blockchain was coined. But uh, I would have to say that Estonia is not a blockchain nation, so we don't run fully on blockchain. We just happen to be uh, in a position where we created similar databases that are now referred to as blockchain uh, technologies. And we use that uh, in our people's registry and uh, to run our state uh, databases and systems. One of the other benefits of blockchain is also mass collaboration and the ease of sharing information to create value. The Netherlands, with its Dutch blockchain coalition, is spearheading efforts to create global awareness and impact. It's a missing piece to support collaboration between different companies, between different governments uh, in a supply chain. It can help you to work together and to uh, give you as a person a better uh, user experience and make new things possible. And yet, where would we be without really addressing the need for us humans to live a life of acknowledgement, respect, dignity and value? Maybe blockchain can help us realize our true human potential. For me, blockchain is going to help me become more me. It's going to celebrate my individuality. I feel like the IP of who we are and our ideas will have value and meaning, and I think that's going to be a huge shift. You go. That's, that's the first time I've shown this in public, so thank you. And the film is about 30, about 40 minutes. This was just 10 minutes, and we go a little bit deeper into sub understanding the different sides of it. And the purpose being, let's make technology more interactive. Let's 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 watch it instead of cat videos. Let's let's watch this documentary and understand it. Let's play in our office uh, during lunchtime or play it at events. So the goal is to really take this story worldwide. Uh, and talk about this, this across the world. Now, I have a special surprise. I have Roman back here, who is part of the film. Roman, come up on stage, and we're gonna do a real quick, uh, quick round of uh, Q&A. I also had Marlos uh, here, I also had Ot here, but they had to leave because of time constraints. Now, Roman is a, a globally known expert on blockchain. He's a professor at IT University in Copenhagen, and I'm really indebted to him and all the people who contributed to the film. Uh, if you guys have questions, we can take one or two questions uh, and Roman can answer that. But Roman, really tell me, is, is, is there too much hype in the world that, that we as technologists, educators, uh, need to kind of simplify? There's, there's, clearly, there's clearly a hype around that, but actually there's a substantial part of that that is also kind of important to understand. And that is around the processes we are kind of blockchainifying here. And that is something that is extremely important. Uh, that's way better. So, ah, uh, yeah. See, that is kind of, you saw me with a beard, kind of that is the effect when you shave, 
uh, the thing is scratching. <laughs> so you see there is a hype around that and the ICO bubble bursted and now we see kind of STO discussions around and also how you can gain benefit from that uh, on a more substantial base. Uh, quite often what is discussed is kind of what kind of business model can you do and we've seen this uh, actually this night as well this evening where the different uh, startups were asked kind of so what is your revenue model, what is your business model. Um, what is often overlooked is that there is actually a new economic model which is upcoming and that is something that is, uh, has to do with the nature of the, of the service, the nature of the value creation of a blockchain system and that is around uh, the public good. Uh, we have uh, currency where this is coming from, but we also see the bill of lading uh, project that has been done by Maersk and IBM and um, um, kind of turning around of an aircraft. We see a lot of processes around which are not owned. So if you think about processes everybody depends upon but nobody owns, that is very likely, and it's data intense, that is very likely a process that is benefiting from a blockchainification. Now we are very much looking into uh, replacing uh, middlemen, the agents, but I find it way more fascinating to look into those processes and if you think about this for a moment, there are gazillions of these processes around which are actually quite interesting to look from a blockchain point of view at now, them. Now we're at, thank you Roman, and we're at World Government Summit, uh, there's many different forums, the services forum and, and we could talk about all of them. Do you really think that blockchain could actually really realistically create efficiency in governments worldwide, like this, this is real, yes? there's things happening right now. Well, we are sort of evangelizing governments for now more than four years, nearly five years. Um, I'm advising the German government, the Danish government, the, the Swiss government, I was in Brussels on Thursday. What we are seeing is an increased awareness that kind of blockchain might be something that is especially from a public, public point of view uh, of relevance. And I can give you just one example. We just concluded a project for the EU Commission where we looked into a solution to reduce carbon emission of all the 300 million vehicles on European streets where you wanted to enforce it across border in multi-jurisdictional spheres and you want to make sure that kind of the carbon measurement as well as the reduction of, of carbon emission is done in a reliable, trustworthy, uh, etc. way. Um, that is a clear indication for me that uh, not just the EU Commission but also kind of national states in Europe and abroad. I was in uh, Australia and I did a workshop for the Reserve Bank for the Reserve Bank of Australia. You see that kind of public sector agencies clearly see the potential and, and uh, take it serious and you see a lot of kind of really interesting projects upcoming. Now, Roman, you're, you're a professor. You teach. You're an educator. You're an academic. What advice would you give everybody here and, and thousands of people who will watch this talk afterwards, how should they really start this journey of learning such a complex technology and, but owning it somehow in their own space? What should right. they do? So that is of course kind of the, the, the killer question, how do you get started and how do you get, uh, t uh, get benefit from that? Kind of in a nutshell, if you think about uh, data is the new oil, then blockchain is the new combustion engine. Right? It's going to be the inter operational system, inter-organizational operation system for a lot of systems we are working on. Now we are not used to create business models for inter-organizational systems, but that is the reason why we have to look at that and that is one of the reasons why we do design thinking workshops at the European Blockchain Center. We are running summer schools, the Blockchain Summer School is upcoming the fourth this year together with the United Nations, with WWF. Uh, with uh, all kinds of industry partners. Yeah. So that is one, one way of getting started and kind of figuring out how you can create a public good with a revenue model where you can actually benefit from. Thank you so much. A big hand for Roman. Thank you very much. He'll be around if you have questions and you can, uh, you can grab him. Uh, thanks so much, Roman. And really, education is the first kind of step towards it and uh, whether it, you're playing the film, whether you're uh, you know, starting a program or, or anything, I think it all starts with learning uh, and educating yourself. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's many different ways to slice this pie, but I think the hesitation that we have to, to accept that we are lacking somewhere and we need to learn something, I think we all need to overcome that. Because um, as we saw in some of the previous presentations, you know, the, the fourth industrial revolution is happening, technology is here. Uh, I think we need to take a proactive stand and accept that it's all very complicated and we don't understand any of it and ask people to explain it to us until we don't understand. Because if we keep on fooling ourselves, we're going to be 
going in a deficit. And two, three, five, ten years down the line, it'll be too late for us to, to recoup. So that was the journey of uh, Blockchain City. Please uh, visit me on the website at blockchaincitymovie.com. Be part of the movement. You want to see the film at your workplace, at your event, in your city, in your country. Please reach out to us, and um, hopefully we'll see you at the future Blockchain Summit here in Dubai, uh, April 2nd and 3rd. And uh, I'm right on time. Thank you so much for being here today and hanging in there. I love you guys. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure having all of you with us. I would like to thank you, and I would like to thank all of our speakers today. Until we see you again in our next session of GX Talks, thank you and enjoy the rest of the summit.